Hi guys and welcome to this, our video on, what is it, interest only loans, part of our financial solver crash course slash VCE general mass course. My name's Darren from Mass Guru. thank you very much for joining me. Hopefully this isn't your first time, if it is, do me a favour, can you head over to YouTube and subscribe to my YouTube channel, it is Maths Guru, for those of you who don't realise, that would be greatly appreciated, just lets me know that you're watching, right, it actually gives me a huge buzz when people subscribe, if you want to turn off notifications, but... Very few people watch these videos. I give up ever so often because I'm like, yeah, no one watches it. And then I get this burst on YouTube and it's greatly appreciated. Also let your teachers, your mates know, hopefully it is useful. Now, what do I do every single lesson? Well, I used to go through the learning objectives. Why would I do that when you can pause the video and read? But basically it's just a continuation of what we have been doing before. And in fact, this is the second from last video in this particular series. And then financial maths and the financial maths module is pretty much done. Now, there's not huge amounts to recap because I've already probably talked about this in previous videos, but today we're going to deal with interest only loans and perpetuities, which really are actually pretty similar. All right, the same concepts because, well, basically, our future value and our present value are exactly the same. And again, I'll explain why that is so in just a moment. But let's carry on. Now, an interest only loan in the United Kingdom many, many years ago, it got a little bit concerning because uh, I think the banks were like, oh, I have an idea here. Why don't we try and make the payments cheaper for people? Which is great. Isn't that great? Yeah. Because at the moment, my interest, my mortgage payment is about $2,000 a month. Now, that sounds awesome, doesn't it? But actually, no, not really. Because of that $2,000, $1,000 goes to the bank in interest. I don't see that money. It just goes as a thank you, bank, for lending me money and not making me homeless, right? The other $1,000 is paid off of my principal. Now, obviously, when you take out a loan, you want to reduce the principal. Why? Because as you're reducing the principal, you're paying less and less and less and less interest. That's the general idea. But some smart aleck in a banking sector said, I know, we'll come up with an idea where actually you don't pay the principal, you only pay the interest. So you're not paying me $2,000 a month, you're only paying me $1,000 a month. Ooh, sounds good, doesn't it? Well, yes, it does. Barring the fact that although you're paying interest in a much, much smaller amount, you're actually not paying any money off your principal. Okay, does that matter? Well, absolutely. Because if I take out $400,000, and 25 years I have finished my loan, well, guess what I've got to pay back? Yeah, I've got to pay back that $400,000 because you didn't pay any off the principal. And that's where people hit massive problems in the UK and maybe around the world because they didn't quite realize that they've still got to save that $400,000. Because otherwise the bank said, well, if you don't have the $400,000 to pay me back, then we're going to take you home. And obviously, 25 years ago, your home wasn't worth anywhere near what it's worth now. So banks were basically selling homes for three or four times the value and making a fortune out of, you know, basically people who just didn't read the small print. So interest only loans get a little bit nervous, but it does actually mean that month on month on month, we're only paying the interest. Point being, though, that your principal value and your final value on your CAS calculator do not change. You will still owe the same amount of money on day one as you will on day 30. The only thing that's different will be a plus or a minus, depending on the context. When one is positive, the other one would have to be negative. All right, so here we go. As I say, and these notes are all downloadable from mathsguru.com uh, with, you know, it's all free to sign up, but there's downloadable notes. You can download them, you can talk over it, you know, write all over it, print it, yada, 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 all right? So what is most important to notice, and I'll explain this again in a minute when we get to an example, is the value of N. And you're going to say, what on earth is this value of N? Well, if you remember, you've got N, I, P, V, P, M, T, F, V, C, P, Y, P, P, Y. Sound effects are free. All right, don't charge for those. Well, I do, but anyway, all right? So in this situation, N can be any value you like. And a lot of people go, but why? Well, if you're paying the interest, it doesn't matter how many payments you make. Your principal value and your final value aren't going to change. Well, in fact, your final value isn't going to change. You can make one payment, you can take 10 payments, you can pay 1,000 payments. Nothing is going to change. So the thing about an interest only loans, is that your N can be any value you like. And the chances are in a question they're not going to tell you because they're hoping to try and trick you. Okay, so how do we model an interest-only loan? Well, obviously, if we go back to this, and I'm still in therapy for these things, there is my recurrence relationship. 
So in this situation, right, the value of D, yes, is actually going to be V0 because we are only paying the interest. Now, I've taken this from the textbook and I find that really, really confusing. What I tend to do is I find the interest, I times it by V0. So whatever my rate of interest is, I multiply it by V0 and that there is effectively going to be my rate of D, that, that, that payment. Because, you know, so long as I take off the interest, I'm not going to basically change my principal. Okay, so now let's uh, have a look at uh, one of these examples by hand, and then we'll use the CAS, okay? Because undoubtedly there'll be an opportunity or times when you won't be able to use the CAS, but we'll come back to that later. Jane borrows $50,000 to buy some shares. Jane negotiates an interest-only loan, all right, so that's important, an interest-only loan at an interest rate of 9% per annum, compounding monthly. So the first thing I'm going to do is going to do 9 divided by 12, fire up my calculator, can I do this in my head? Yes, do I want to? No. Uh, so let's hit menu, add a calculator, 9 divided by 12 gives me 0.75%. Now the reason that's important is because 0.75% of my overall amount, this $50,000, is actually going to be my monthly amount that Jane will be required to pay because she's only paying the interest and her monthly amount of interest is seven or 0.75% of the 50,000. So 0.75 divided by 100 times by 50, one, two, three, okay? So that was my monthly or my interest rate, 0.75, my compounding interest rate, divided by 100 times 50,000. I've got my calculator already ready to go. So 0.75 divided by 100, and that's times up by 50, one, two, three, gives me $375, he says, writing in highlighter. $375, so that's by hand. And believe it or not, perpetuities, interest-only loans, all these type of things tend to work in very much the same way. And they can try and trick you, but can we use the financial solver? Of course we can use the financial solver in this example. So let's do menu eight, one. Right, the N. Now, because it's an interest-only payment, it doesn't matter, I'll put N as one. My interest rate was 9% per annum. Principal value, she's buying some shares. She's borrowing to buy some shares. So positive payment. We're trying to find future value because it's interest only. She's still going to earn or, or <coughs> have to pay back that $50,000. Payments per year is 12, 12. And then fingers crossed if I hit my PMT minus $375. And again, remember, that just means that she's got to pay $375 per month. A loan of 6% per annum compounding monthly requires payments of $440 each month. Right, let's start filling in my financial solver. And I'm trying to trick you here, guys. All right, so uh, just a word of warning. Let me see what I've got here. 6%, my interest rate is 6%. Compounding monthly, all right, PPY and CPY is 12. Payments of $440, so minus $440. Each month, the loan is interest only. I can make N equals one. What is the principle? Hold on a moment. I don't have enough information. Now, they want you to find the principal value, yeah? And you might think, well, okay, I can just put my calculator and hit enter there. But no, because I'm missing my final value. Remember, for interest-only loans, my principal value and my final value are the same. But if I don't know one, I can't put the other one in. Oh, no. Oh, no. What do I do now? Well, basically, this goes back to the idea that we know our interest rate is 6% per annum compounding monthly. So I need to find out my monthly interest rate is going to be 6 divided by 12, which is 0.5%. Now, what is this 440? And really, this is the massive thing about understanding these questions. Well, what we know is that half a percent of my principal value is going to give me $440. So I'm now going to write that out in actual sort of math speak. So 0.5% of my principal value is going to give me $440. Oh, awesome. Well, actually, I've got something that I can effectively solve because I could put into my calculator now solve 0.5 divided by 100 times principal value. Well, what, can I, what letter can I use? Hmm, probably X equals 440 comma x. Let's do that then. So let's fire up my calculator. I can't do this on a financial solver. And again, this is a trick to some of the questions. They're like, ah, oh, everyone's going to regurgitate. So I'm going to do solve uh, 0 0.5 divided by 100 times by x equals 440. And we'll do comma x, hit enter. 
And there we go, we've got x, which is my principal value. So my principal value in that situation would be $88,000. ka -ching, we like it. Now again, interestingly, and I love the way that people's brains work. Uh, one of my current students turned around and said, well, actually you can do that in your head. And they go, how do you do that in your head? And they go, well, if I know a half a percent is $440, then I know that 1% would be $880, because obviously half percent just double it, it gives you the 1%. And so 100% of what I started with would be 88,000. And I was like, ka-ching, whoa, I've been teaching for like ooh, thousands of years. And that, first time I thought of doing that. All right, so there are other ways of actually being able to do this. An interest-only loan of $1 million requires quarterly payments of $4,000. So do we have everything that we need there? Right, let's try and fill it in. An interest-only loan of $1 million, it's a loan. So my principal value is going to be $1 million, which means my future value is minus $1 million. It is quarterly, so those are going to be four and four. N is going to be one because it doesn't really matter how many payments I make. And my payment is going to be minus four, one, two, three. Can I find my interest rate? Well, is there only one thing missing? There absolutely is. So I'm going to go menu, eight, one. And let's put that information in. So N is one, my interest rate I'm trying to find. One, one, two, three, one, two, three. My payment was minus four, one, two, three. That's gonna be minus one, one, two, three, one, two, three. And it said they were quarterly payments. So fingers crossed, if I go to my interest rate now, there we go. What is my annual interest rate? Now, do you see how they're gonna try and trick you here? Mm -hmm. Because actually that was, oh, my annual interest rate. Don't worry about it, they're not trying to trick you at all. My head was like, oh, I've got to times that by four, but I haven't. So in this situation, my interest rate would be 1.6%. Happy? And believe it or not, that is the end of this. I don't seem to have any VCAR questions for this one. I don't know whether there were some. There must have been some. I obviously just couldn't find them for this particular video, but I'm done. Going to move on to perpetuities in the next video. Hopefully, I'll see you in that one there. If not, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Again, it just lets me know that you're watching. Tell your mates, tell your teachers, this resource is here. Head over to mathsguru.com where basically it is all there for you to help you smash your VCE. If I see you again, that's awesome. If not, please take care and stay safe.